I want to thank my patron Joe Potato for supporting this video and for having a very specific form, as is their right by the virtues of material reality. Form. What is it? We can't put it into perfect words, but we know it when we see it. Let's try to make it a little more clear, though I, I do think there's only so clear we can make it because form is a weird thing. Weirder than most suspect. There's at least two kinds of form. There is the form of reality, and then there is the illusionistic form that is in our drawings, or that we at least try to get into our drawings. Form in reality is probably something like the matter-of-fact volume of an object or material. Your couch has a specific form, for example. A wave of water also has a specific form. If only for an arbitrarily small moment. It would be possible to exactly describe the form of your couch down to even extremely fine details. And that was possible even before today's excellent tools. You could do it through hard work. Just imagine sculpting an exact copy of your couch using calipers and rulers and pointing devices and the other tools of the craftsman. These days, you can do it even more easily and with more precision using things like photogrammetry. You can take a bunch of photos of your couch and then put it through a piece of software that generates a 3D model. And then you can take that 3D model and you could 3D print that model at the exact same size as your couch. And if everything went well, it would be an exact replication of the topological surface of your couch, if not its internal volumes. It's theoretically possible to do the same with that wave of water, just vastly more difficult. And it's a little harder to determine exactly where the wave ends. It's probably shooting off tongues of water, drops are flying everywhere, the foam is bubbling and crackling, making a fractal universe of positive and negative surfaces. There's probably more dither to determining what counts as the wave than there is for your couch but it's still possible. Someone could sculpt that wave in marble and produce something that you might recognize as that exact same wave of water, which is, let's stop right there, that's a, that's a miracle, isn't it? That if, given hypothetically advanced tools, you could replicate recognizably a wave of water in stone. Even though they're almost polar opposites, one moves, one doesn't, one is liquid, one is amorphous, and the other is solid, one is transparent, the other is opaque, none of this keeps your mind, the key player here, from subtly interpreting a mental conception of the form of the wave, its surface topology, such that it could recognize that form if presented with a duplicate of it in another medium. That's utterly weird. The reality of that utterly weird truth, it exists. It's out there. There is some objective answer to the position of all the surfaces of that wave relative to each other. Its particular personal proportion, the beautiful points of its portrait that prevent improperly pegging it as another wave. As real as that solution is, our conception of it is invariably imperfect, because unlike, let's say, a 3D laser scanner, which directly measures the position of a point in space and then stitches it together with others to make a surface, we create our idea of the form by distilling it from various channels of layered information. We need to interpret information of color, light, material, and optics to produce the abstract notion of the form. What we might imagine in our minds as the 3D model or marble sculpture of the thing we're looking at. Even psychological reactions can screw us up here. Ever seen a spider and thought it was huge and realize it's kind of small when you come back to the room with a shoe to kill it? Have you ever seen a beginner put eyes on their drawing of a head? You might think, well, if this is about surface, can we avoid these visual tricks and get the information directly through tactile sensation, through touch? Not at all, though I invite you to try to sculpt your brother by wearing a blindfold and mushing your hands all over his face. 
That doesn't work because our hands and touch reduce huge amounts of surface information into vague point sensations that we exaggerate to feel like what we expect, even though what they actually feel like looks more like our hands than the actual surface we're touching. The resolution of our biological touch is just too low and too restricted by the shape of the apparatus. It's interesting, however, that form isn't the realm of just one sense. It's not only the perception of light in your vision or the low resolution impact of touch, and as different as those two impressions are, they are still pointing at one source of form, even if there is no way for you to directly integrate and interact with that source. Try this. In your mind's eye, suspend yourself over an endless ocean. Extend this ocean to the horizon and far beyond. Make it a flawless disk all around, uninterrupted by land or ship or feature, just choppy water in all directions. Place yourself there in the center, floating just a couple feet from the icy surface. Let a few errant drops from the colliding wavelets beneath you hit the bottoms of your feet. Now you probably have the sun on. Let's avoid that. Go ahead and turn off the lights. May only a curving pearl of moon illuminate the sea around you. Its vast darkness envelops you. Where are the stars? How strange, they should be overwhelmingly clear, yet all is velvety night. Look down at the waves. Notice what they look like. How big or small, how turbulent or calm. Watch how their foamy peaks dance in and out of the spare light. See how they catch a silver second of being before being subsumed into the vast ocean. The horizon is gone now. Turn as you may, you only see the waves in a small circle of lucky light around you. Beyond its natural threshold, it's all perfect void, unbeing, ready to be made into endless waves, forever. Your dark materials from which to create more sea. Now, what did those waves look like to you? Did they look like anything? Or did they only feel like something? What kind of feelings are we talking about here? Emotional feeling or touch feeling? Whatever it was for you, that's form. It doesn't matter if it was visual, tactile, or if it was driven by the mood of the environment, that's the form. If putting yourself in that place made the waves ominous, their form reacted. You could feel what it would be like to be caught in them, lifted and pushed under by them. If being there alone in that sphere of moonlight made you feel serene, removed, then the waves probably took on that more tranquil mood. Their form reacted to, reinforced that. Maybe you even turned the sea into a perfectly smooth mirror, reflecting that serenity. And of course, whatever happened over that sea, it's all mind. Every part of it was formed by you. That's the subjective core of form. So with all this subjectivity messing up the works, how are we supposed to think of form in our drawings? Well, it's up to each individual artist. Some artists want to resolve form very intensely, make it very illusionistic. Others want to avoid it completely. Some want to be able to analyze the form that's in a photograph or the model in front of them and accurately translate it to their surface. Others want to be able to invent it, 
to create a direct connection between their mind's ability to create a subjective impression of form and the hand to transcribe it in a medium. These goals are all equally worthy. Amazing things can be done in either realm, but all are subjective and must be understood as such. Even copying a photograph is, strictly speaking, impossible. Oil paints are not photosensitive chemical emulsions, and they require some license to give the same impression. Some editing, exclusion, compression, something, something's gonna have to give. We must be willing to improvise, change, judge, and utterly vibe in whatever way necessary to achieve the form impression we want. And that's really what it's all about. What we want, our particular opinion of what we're going for in our art. Want a more formy drawing? Well, you'll need a wider value range available to model those form transitions in the light. This steals available value range and contrast for depicting the value difference between local colors in the drawing. This is an unavoidable trade-off. Are all of those form values going into one figure, one object? Well, that decreases the value tools you have at your disposal to communicate the surrounding environment. Not impossible, but surely more difficult. In complex wide scenes, each individual subject, person, tree, rock, tends to have less of a form impression than they would if the painting was just them. So your opinion, your desires, what you think and feel about form is very important here. And if you don't know where to start, if you don't even know what your opinion is, well, there's no easy answer to that, but I would say look inward. Think of the open ocean exercise. How did it first present to you? Your mind was invoked to have a dream. How did it offer up that dream at the first moment of contact? Analyze that. There is interesting data there. The most interesting, maybe. Have you ever become lucid during a dream? Do you remember that strange twilight period before the whole thing comes undone? Where everything, that convincing, solid dream world, suddenly winks back at you, shocking you, reminding you, Hey, I'm you. This is all you. It sure is. Your mind knows how to erect that glistening and convincing facade of form and color and emotional impression, and it does it very specifically, and I suspect personally, though no one can know because we can't dream each other's dreams, I think your dream is doing itself your way even if the material nature of that process can never be revealed to you. It's one of those things you can know, but you can't know you know it. And that's really what the mystery of form is for an artist. You have the matter-of-fact evidence that you are a form master, just not the parts of you that you feel identical to. This arbitrary boundary that you create keeps you from relishing personally in the perfect artistry of your visual perception. Your eye, just as much you as any other part, is a master of form. Under its perfect care, all forms read. Everything feels 3D, perfectly structural. Color and value are married together with utter grace and sublime precision, yet Artists must confront the sheer cliff face of trying to teach another part of them, their hand, to imitate some fraction of that virtuosity. It's quite mad when you think about it. Getting better at drawing can be framed as a hard struggle for your masterful eye to teach its bumbling apprentice, the hand, to do just a little bit of what it does so well. Very little input from homunculus you is needed in this framing, seeing as how it has no insight into how the eye does its job, it can only armchair critic on the resulting virtues. There's another layer to the mystery of form that is the inherited existential question of all people, not just artists, and that's the abject impossibility of all our entangled love, emotion, and depth of experience being tied to these illusionistic impressions of form. Forget your significant other, children, parents, just go 
roll around on the rug with your dog for a while. While you do that, really look at them. What part of that visual perception of their shape, their values, their edges, is really them? Feel the contours of your dog's face as you push their ears back and go, Brr, who's a good doggy? What part of that surface area boundary, circumscribed by your clumsy hands, contains their essence? What it really is to be that particular little pup? Trip out on that for a while, and then go hug a person you love, and wonder where in that dreamed mind form that you call them, are they really hiding? Where the hell in there are they? How do you hug that part? And how is it that doing a drawing of some aspect of them, some part of that impression, does somehow seem to make a little copy of that subtle soul and therein gifts a piece of paper with that forever. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go pet my dog. Uh, you keep drawing, and good luck with that.